What's up? <laughs> I'm Jeremiah Alexis, aka the Urban Legend, in case you don't know, and this is my show. It'll be a weekly show. Every single week we're going to be centering on electronic music primarily, but we'll be going all over the place. And music, news, reviews, interviews, all that good stuff is going to be right here on EDM Weekly with the Urban Legend on Cool Flame TV. You notice my cool shirt here? No, that's not me. That's a fella by the name of Gas Lamp Killer. Gas Lamp Killer is an amazing artist. He's on Brain Feeder Records, which is Flying Lotus's label. Unfortunately, if you haven't heard, Gas Lamp Killer went through a crazy accident where he flipped over the handlebars of his scooter. The scooter landed on him, burst his spleen. The man almost died, but he survived. And now he's back, better than ever. And we actually went to his coming out party the other day at the Mayan. He's doing an awesome project called the Gaslight Experience, where he's playing with a, a full eight piece band. We also happened to see a Mr. Adrian Young. I don't know if you're familiar with Adrian Young, but he came out with an album with Ghostface Killer. And now he's collaborating with another awesome 90s hip hop act, who also happened to produce one of my favorite songs of all time. Check it out. <laughs> California has plenty of amazing music festivals, but one of my favorites goes down every year in New Orleans. It's called the Voodoo Experience, and this year was incredible for EDM in particular. Afrojack, Calvin Harris, Bass Nectar, and this guy, Gaslamp Killer. He's an alumni of Voodoo Experience, and we actually talked at Voodoo Experience, ranging from trap music to why LA is such a great incubator for EDM and music in general. Check it out. This is Jeremiah Alexis, and I am with the man Gas Lamp Killer. An interesting development that I've been seeing is the advent of trap music. In the South, where it comes from, it's a pretty new phenomenon, but I first saw trap music as purely an instrumental thing at Low End Theory. Well, the first beats like that I ever heard came from the South. I right. mean, it was Southern gangster rap, and the instrumentals behind it were always this crazy, Freaking sprinkler system hi hats going off with hard ass kick drums and nasty snares and I just like instrumental beats. Trap is accentuating the drums in ways that I think are really creative and really moving forward with this instrumental hip hop thing we got going. You know, the term trap comes from the ghetto, the trap, but also it comes from the trap kit, which is first seated drum kit ever invented, which was invented here in New Orleans as well. Since Brain Feeder is now becoming more of a bigger presence, you're going to be probably playing more festivals. How does that feel kind of being on the divide of being a club DJ now, starting to play festivals and going from 500 to potentially 50,000 people? Sometimes 500 people can be better than 5,000, but sometimes 5,000 can be better than 500. It just depends on the vibe of the crowd and the vibe of the day. I want to play in front of as many people as I can. I feel like I'm ready. But also there's a disconnect between that 20 foot barrier right. that you don't get with the club. So right. it's a little less intimate, a little less personal, but it's still really fun and I'm, I'm ready for it. Bring it on, I'm, I'm ready for the next <laughs> gig. When the crowd really is all in, how energetically does that feel? It's almost like you're this energy sponge. Nervous, anybody who's ever gotten on a stage, you get this crazy nervous energy, but it's a mix between the love, if you're getting love, 
that love and that nerves, like those nerves making you want to just jump out of your skin. If you could channel that energy, you could do great things and the crowd responds to that type of stuff. It's what I'm meant to do. I can't do anything else. Why do you feel LA is such a fertile ground for like kind of like more experimental music? You know? I think LA has been out of the spotlight. Most of the artists in LA were always doing stuff under the radar. Nobody was really up on game. So except for Dr. Dre, like real heavy gangster rap, right. ma major thing in LA and Cypress Hill as well. You know, freestyle fellowship and stuff like that was almost like too weirdo, too left field. And that's the type of camp that I ran with. It was the only thing I could think, you know? We've been doing this from the heart for a long time. Right. And this is just what we do. And that's that. First episode of the Urban Legends EDM Weekly in the books. Hope y'all enjoyed it. Stay tuned every week on Thursday on coolflame.com for your boy, the Urban Legend, and his news, reviews, and interviews. Peace out. See you next Thursday.